Hello there! We will be going to present The Social Cultural Theory by Lev Vygotsky. In this video report, I will discuss and answer the following objectives of this theory. First, I will explain why Vygotsky's theory is called social cultural theory. Second, I will differentiate Piaget and Vygotsky's views on cognitive development. And lastly is, I will explain how scaffolding is useful in teaching skills. Before we dive into the main topic, let's know more about the man behind this theory. Who is Lev Vygotsky? He was born in Russia in 1896. His work began when he was studying learning and development to improve his own teaching. In his lifetime, he wrote on language, thought, psychology of art, learning and development, and educating students with special needs. His ideas about language, culture, and cognitive development have become a major influence in psychology and education today. Now let's talk about his theory and learn why it is considered a socio-cultural theory. The key theme of his theory is that social interaction plays a very important role in cognitive development. Vygotsky believed that individual development could not be understood without looking into the social and cultural context within which development happens. And he strongly believed that social interaction and language are the two central factors in cognitive development. Therefore, his theory became known as the social-cultural theory of development. Next, let's differentiate Piaget and Vygotsky's views on cognitive development. Vygotsky argues that community and language play a central part in learning, while John Piaget concluded that children's cognitive development happens in stages. Vygotsky rejected his ideas and believed that children develop independently of specific stages as a result of social interaction. In this table, we can clearly see the differences of their beliefs. First, in terms of social interaction, Piaget is more on individual focus, while Vygotsky is more on social focus. Second, in terms of cultural factors, Piaget believed that there are universal stages of cognitive development Vygotsky, on the other hand, did not propose stages but emphasized on cultural factors in cognitive development. And lastly, when it comes to language, Piaget did not give much emphasis on language, but for Vygotsky, he stressed the role of language in cognitive development. He claimed that language is the primary method Adults transmit information to children and it becomes the powerful tool in learning. For Vygotsky, this talking to oneself is an indication of the thinking that goes on in the mind of the child. This will eventually lead to private speech. Private speech is a form of self-talk that guides the child's thinking and action. Now, let's move on to the next slide. When the child develops and gains higher mental function, this development ideally happens in the zone of proximal development. First, there is what we can do on our own. We perform alone at a certain level of competency and we refer this as the zone of actual development. Then, 
the child can perform a higher level of competency in the zone of proximal development, which represents what we can do with the help of an adult, a friend, or technology, or what Vygotsky called the more knowledgeable other, or MKO. Last, there is what beyond our reach, and we cannot do even with the help of others. Now, let's see how scaffolding is useful in teaching skills. Scaffolding is Vygotsky's term for the appropriate assistance given by the teacher or the more knowledgeable other to assist the learner accomplish a task. These are the examples of scaffolding. The first picture shows a teacher, which in this case the more knowledgeable other, did not help the child move the chess pieces, but instead he coaches the child how to move it and do it alone. And the second picture shows a teacher teaching his student during computer class. Instead of showing the child how it's done, he instructed and lets the child sit on the chair to have hands-on experience on how computer works. The examples given here shows how a right amount of assistance can allow the child to accomplish the task. Therefore, Lev Vygotsky used to say, what a child can do in cooperation today, she or he will be able to do alone. It means that teachers should scaffold in such way, and when it's done appropriately, it can make a learner confident, and eventually, he can accomplish the task without any need of assistance. And that concluded my video report presentation. Here is the list of my references and photo credits. You can find the textbook or check the YouTube links. God bless everyone and stay safe. Thank you for watching.